In this video, we'll talk about one of my favorite foods in the world, bread. Yeah, if you know me at all, and especially if you've traveled with me, then you know I often talk about many different foods as being my favorite. But really, who doesn't love bread? In today's video, I'll discuss how they make a very unique version of the staple food on the outskirts of a small, often overlooked town in Morocco called Scuda. So, stick around. Just on the edge of a small town in Morocco called Scuda, one we always stop at on my mystical Morocco trip, there's a wonderful family-owned and operated auberge called Kasbah Ait Ben Damiet. This small hotel is run by a French couple named Colette and Yannick. She's a chef who painstakingly prepares meals for our group, and he, along with the help of their able staff, does much of the rest. Each time we stay in Skouda at Colette and Yannick's hotel, on the first evening, after a long day in the saddle coming from the desert, where we have an incredible morning camel ride for sunrise, we settle in, relax, have a few drinks, and then a local woman from the nearby village fires up a traditional tafarnut oven made of clay to make really tasty and unique tafarnut bread, whose name originates from Berber. After heating the two-sided domed oven by burning bone-dry sticks, twigs, and small logs, she prepares a wooden board by dabbing it with water to keep the dough from sticking. Then she drops a nice dollop of dough on the board and roughly rolls it out into a thick layer that she then takes off the board with two hands and places on the many hot stones and pebbles that line the bottom of the left side of the oven, which has been heated to her liking. As she prepares the next batch, she periodically watches the dough as it bakes which doesn't take long at all. She flips it over, and then, when she deems it's finished, she carefully takes it out with a stick and places it on the table for her helper to very carefully brush and flick off the small stones. I know what you're thinking. My goodness, weren't you afraid you were going to bite into even a small pebble? And yes, I absolutely was, and I very clearly warned my guests to be extra careful of what they were putting in their mouths. You can see in this part of the video how the heat from the right side of the oven quickly rises into an opening in the wall in the middle of the dome and heats the left side of the oven where the raw dough lies on the stones. It never ceases to amaze me what can be done with three or four simple ingredients. Almost all breads require very few ingredients at all, namely flour, water, salt, and sometimes yeast. There are other things to do in and around Skouda, and relaxing by the pool is certainly one of them. But one of my favorite things to do in all of Morocco is to walk through an oasis, ending with a visit to the impressive Kasba Amradil, so important that it appears on the back of older 50 dirham notes and dates back to the 17th century. We start our walk after a short drive from our hotel to the outskirts of Skouda, where we're dropped off at a nondescript location on the side of the road to begin our adventure. I don't know about you, but I've always imagined an oasis as a small island with a single palm tree on it, kind of like in the cartoons. But here in Morocco, the oasis can be 50 miles long and five miles wide and a welcome respite in an otherwise harsh and dry landscape. We very casually make our way along a small path, admiring the ancient engineering still used today that manages the limited water to be found in this area. Periodically, the life-giving water is directed from one plot of land to another to assure everyone's crops get ample sustenance, as these many small pieces of property may be owned by a number of local families. Everything from melons to olive trees to date palms and more can be seen along the way, as can a number of deteriorating structures that we stop to photograph and explore. We'll often see the local people out tending to their fields and spend some time speaking to them through our local translator and guide extraordinaire Ishmael. 
We'll ask questions about their lives and seemingly just as interested in us, they'll often ask questions about our group. And this to me is so satisfying and the number one reason why I travel. As I mentioned, at the end of our walk, we're rewarded with a visit to the amazing Kasba Amradil, where we enjoy a leisurely walk around and some mint tea. Hi, I'm Kim. I'm here with Ralph in uh, Skora, Morocco. It's been such an amazing journey. I just have tons of photos and I can't wait to uh, process them and check out what I've got. Our group has also taken wonderful morning walks in the area around Kassar El Kababa, another absolutely gorgeous hotel we've stayed at over the years. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up and do enter a comment below. And remember, drifters, life's too short not to travel.